Hey guys, we're here today with one of the most iconic cars of the drifting history and actually even TV history. This car behind me is the world famous Netflix Hyperdrive winner of the sh a show that was uh, aired in 2019 on Netflix and uh, this car was sitting for about six years and today we're going to share with you some of the story behind the show, some of the behind of the scenes of this car we are putting this car back to life to do some shows and uh, represent better uh, all the history of the car. So we have here today uh, Diego Iga, he came from Brazil, he's actually preparing for a Formula Drift event this weekend with his FRS, also running FuelTech, but we tried to, to benefit of him being here and actually bringing this car back to life. So let's talk with him and see some of the details of this car. Uh, whoever watched this show, I'm sure you guys will like to know some more details about this car. Thank you. You, man. You too. <laughs> Good to see you too. Diego, so uh, <laughs> I mean. so besides, you all you guys all know uh Fiotech is also a Brazilian company and me, Luis is also Brazilian, so but we're we're going to try some English here to, to explain some of the of the story about behind this car and uh, Diego's career. So first Diego he's now twenty six, right? Yes. And uh, when the show was recorded he was actually twenty one years old. Yes. They called you Baby face, or how they call you? <laughs> <laughs> Baby face assassin. Yeah. It was. Uh, I was watching, and and uh, so for you guys that are watching here, if you ever seen this show, I even recommend you to to actually watch again because it's cool to to understand a little behind what took to actually you to be competing over there on the, that show. A lot of people don't understand. Sometimes you just see the show, the episode, and he obviously were spoiling spoiling here, and he won the show. Uh, it was a it was a very tough show, a very real show. Reality is no, nothing was staged. Everything was really uh, competitive. Uh, we even had two Brazilians, not only you, but also uh, João Barion, which is uh, also, also, also uh, which is also our friend, our client, and and they, you you guys are both represented very well mm -hmm. the Brazilian community because you you had the very good chances of winning both, and in the end you ended up getting the trophy, and with this car, so. Now we have the car back to life here, so it's a it's a cool moment on that. It's cool. It's cool to bring back memories, right? Yes. So some years ago we didn't have this hub dyno back yeah, then, yeah. right? Yeah. So we took this thing. You, you haven't wrapped yet, mm -hmm. and we took this thing back to our buddies from LS Experts, yeah. right? So Charlie Hill from LS Experts, the closest dyno. Yeah, the, it was the closest dyno to us. It was like a chassis dyno. He's not even close to us anymore, but like back in the day he was. We took this thing there, everything worked pretty well, but like everything was rushed. I remember you, your dad, you know, a bunch of tools, the car, and we trying to put fuel tech on it, make mm -hmm. sure everything works, and rushing here, so rushing fast. there. That, that was cool. And you guys 
pretty much untested, mm -hmm. right? Pretty much untested, because like Shakedown you did, but like pretty much untested, went straight to the show. Yeah, and, and even when, when you contacted me or us, I remember you were not allowed to even say which show it was. So <laughs> we were like working on the car and he, he pretty much asked, hey, I need help to make sure the car runs good. Actually, he thought the car was running perfect. <laughs> we put on the dyno, the car made, I believe, like 280 or 300. Oh, my so, God. Yes. oh my God. That was a <laughs> then we figured, okay, you, you need a fuel tech, a tune-up. Then we had, uh, at the time, we had Omar Crespo, uh, which is also a very good friend of us. He was working at FuelTech and he wired the car mm -hmm. in a few days. Yeah, it was we, quick. It was yeah, quick. it was quick because it was, it, it's still a complex car. We still oh, had yes. to keep... At that time, we could not control some of the stuff, like the variable camshaft. Yes. And so we kept the stock computer on. Mm -hmm. uh, so it was a mix. Sometimes even more complex than replacing the whole electronics. Yes. Nowadays, we have all the features to control like, completely this kind of engine, but mm -hmm. at that time, we didn't. Yes. Uh, so we had the car dyno again after the fuel tech, tune it, and made 520 at the time. Uh, I don't recall the number uh, on it. check the, the dyno footage, right? I think so. Five, yeah, 520. Yes. 520, right? Yes. He did 520 horsepower at the wheel at the time. Uh, and then you, you you literally took off with your dad. And this is another cool story because it's, it was only you two guys, right? Only you or your dad mm -hmm. going to the only show. Two. So he didn't have had a huge team behind to, 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 to really participate of the show. And the show was a very tough recording like 27 days 27 nights actually non-stop right. non-stop non -stop. yeah it's, it's top in, on, in sunday okay sunday, yes oh so sunday, you had a sunday, sunday. oh yeah, yeah. Sunday. Ah, <laughs> that <makes laughs> you had a sunday off come on bud yeah. <laughs> and then with that that non-stop recording I, I remember i was helping you guys online Sometimes he called me and say, "Oh, uh, engine coolant temperature stopped working, <laughs> and the engine doesn't run because it was just flooding with uh, too much fuel." Then we had to improvise and put the a configuration that if you actually watch back the show, his car was always showing 90 degrees uh, Celsius, which is like 200 degrees Fahrenheit. Fix it because we lost the sensor. He had so we had to fix that number so the car was yes. able to to run. So he had to warm up in a different tune-up. And that was because it was literally he had to pull the blower off to fix that thing. So yeah, it's a it pain. was impossible. You, you had to do a lot of stuff. Like you had, I remember you mentioned you had to replace brake pads every every, every round. Mm -hmm. uh, also, all the brakes. Brake and fluid. All brake pads and fluid. Brake. How about tires? About uh, here tires. Rear tires all the time. And oh, they uh, every day. And they, every day. Every day. And they had you to use a specific fuel, right? Yes, the VP port. VP port, yeah. So we actually tuned it before in 93, pump 93, and they had It's tricky, use. you know, yeah. you go from like pump gas to race gas, so it's yeah. tricky. But at the same time, uh, the tune up left really here really good, and the car had no problems like making power, no problems overheating, right? The only really challenge he had was mainly with the, the actual obstacles with water. The water was the biggest challenge, I believe, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, whoever had the race car version cars, they got a lot of water inside yes. of the engine bay. Broke the engine. Yes, a lot of people, they, they had a, a, how do you call a... A Joan. Yeah, Joan had a problem, right? And he, exactly, Joan Barion, the other Brazilian racing, he had uh, the car uh, got water inside the intake manifold and, lo and lost the engine, right? Yeah, I don't remember the in inside the intake manifold, but I think the car so hot, the engine uh, so hot, uh -huh. it cracked. And it yes. cracked something, breaks uh, something. His car, yeah. I believe, was more like a race car version, so had may maybe less mm -hmm. uh, inside mm -hmm. water protection, right? Yes. I, I create them now, improvise the, yeah. the, how can I say, the, uh, So you put like whatever you had to, to try to block the water from coming inside. Yes. So like what kind of material are you using? Uh, I know <laughs> a neighbor, but metal and tape. So yeah. like just scraps just that you can find yeah. there. Yeah, I, I'm 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 working every day for how can say uh, for igual arrumava todos os dias porque a água tirava fora. Ah, so he had to, oh. you had to repair every single day yes. what you have done before. So it's so improvised. <laughs> they just left that lap. Next lap, we do it again. Let's let, do it again. Yeah. Okay, so every lap you have tires. Pads, pads and all your breaks. water blocks. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and I saw a lot of guys had problems with the windshield uh, being uh, like a, uh, 
The wipers didn't work? Or no, what? no, you have like... Basado, right? you, yeah, basado. Oh, so get fog. Fog, fog. Yeah. Ooh, yes. And even the water the, the water pro was so hard that the, even the Corina... Man, right? I didn't thought about that, but like, so you had like a hot environment, right? The car, because it's under stress, it's hot as hell. Then you go through water, a lot mm -hmm. of vapor. Mm -hmm. Yes. And then everything's kind of open because mm -hmm. the race car, mm -hmm. and then the vapor fogs everything. Mm -hmm. It's like, there's, there's no way to be easy clean. <laughs> yeah. Damn. And then even Corina, the German lady, mm -hmm. she had a problem where a, a, a lot of water uh, dumped into the windshield and broke the windshield. Oh, broke the windshield, hurt her. Yes. Yeah, she wow. got like uh, glass pieces on the eyes, so they had to remove that part. And there is another part of the, move, the, the recording, I remember you mentioned outside of the cameras, I don't know if you can share this, but there was an oil... Uh, yes. Uh, oil... Yeah. Uh, oil in the track. Oil in the track, and only you actually could accomplish that and uh, it was really hard for everyone. Yes. And they have to remove that from the recordings, yes, right? Because very dangerous. It was dangerous, right? The oh, so are... someone had an idea yeah. to put oil on the track and see how it goes. Oil and, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> that's a curveball. Yeah, like clean, uh, detergent. Uh, detergent? Yeah, like soap. Soap, soap. Yeah. yes. Man. Crazy track. Yeah. Crazy, crazy, very slow. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Boom. Uh -huh. Very, yeah. very slow. So then, Obviously, the, the show went by, and you, you start. You, you enter the third episode, right? Yes. So, in the third episode, you start winning already. You you win almost. You, I mean, you won like three or four. Uh, I don't remember. It's been already four, five years already. Five years since you were. Yeah, yeah. yeah. How can but, you remember? And uh, but it was interesting. So he started winning, and then all the even the the the, the show. Uh, uh, announcers were like already pointing you and and, and, and João as the and the leaders are the most yeah, strong contenders reason. there. Yeah, and they even had like a very nice Lamborghini from AMS. Yes, the guy was that car was amazing. I mean, it had a lot of power, a lot of stuff, and uh, so they had from like experienced racers with simple car. This is probably one of the most simpler cars at the show actually, mm -hmm. and we have like thousand horsepower plus race cars. This is a cheap car. Yeah, <laughs> it, was, it is. Yeah. And, uh, did the job. Yeah, did the job. Good job, man. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> and then, then you. Yeah. And how was the emotion about winning the, the that with that much pressure? Uh, this is a dream for me yeah. because you you look the Lamborghini in the same yeah. competition. You look the drifty racing car, Formula drift car. Uh -huh. uh, a lot of cars, good cars, good drivers. Uh huh. But oh yeah. No, and that sounds good. <laughs> and after, because we know your dad, your dad was with you, and his dad is like a very famous racer in Brazil as well. But he put a lot of pressure on you, right? <laughs> <laughs> he was really wanted to ever fit to happen, and, and he did a good job because he he I'll let your dad about this, yeah. you know. <laughs> so, <laughs> but it was a very cool thing. It's like dad and son racing or fighting together to to do, to do this. And uh, after that, a lot of doors actually opened for you. Obviously, we had the there was the the pandemic. After that, mm -hmm. closed uh, because you were your final intention was to race Formula Drift yes. back, right? Yes. Because you you've been to Formula Drift before that, right? Yes, I tried the Formula Drift 2017. Okay, and Using price pack car. on price pack. Price pack. Okay, so he he tried Formula Drift price pack the entry level class. Yes. With this car, but it wasn't a really good year, right? Yeah, no, I, I started uh, using the nitros, uh -huh. but I, I, I don't have a support. Don't you support? Consider. Yeah, he didn't have all the backup or the he, support. He, yes, uh, it, the cars broke every round. Uh -huh. Every round broke the nitros. It's, broke it's, it's, the, yeah, it's tough, yeah. right? It's tough? You need to you yes. need to have a crew. You yes. need to have spare parts. Yeah. You yeah. need to have the time. Yes. Yeah, it's, yes. Not, it's not simple. That looks like. So what looks in the over the years after 2019, when be, between the show and now 2023, you did a, you started growing a lot in Brazil. You start winning championships. You start be, be, uh, practicing more and making mm -hmm. your career. So yes. now you're back to Formula Drift. Yes. As a professional driver and actually professional driving, good car. Yes. <laughs> so he had the power now. <laughs> very good car, boss. That's a very good car. Yeah, and uh, then the new his new car. By the way, we're going to talk more about that car later. Uh, in another episode, but that car is already given now is a is a very good uh, mate uh, is, a, is a very good build from Ryan mm -hmm. Turks, mm -hmm. and you actually already improved some of the on the car, and now you have really a good chances of of showing your talent on Formula Drift. So yes, uh, 
but and going back to this car, so this car after the recording, it was literally sitting on a container for for five years, right? Yes, five, five years. years. I'm I'm drove this car two times, three times. And if you guys see, there is all the the like marks on the <laughs> car. It, it had it, this the car exactly how we left the show, pretty much. Yes, right. So yes. you brought the exactly. car here. We just helped you on, on refreshing, like oils and fluids and change. And and today you guys are going to see uh, how if it's still making the 520 horsepower it was before. <laughs> yes, <laughs> now it's espresso. Yeah. <laughs> so let's see how how the car runs, and you guys are going to have a good idea. Then we see how what are the results. Cool. cool. Let's do it. Man, I'm happy because like this thing has been taking a beat, yeah. right? <laughs> this thing is like beat at the track, abandoned inside, you know, somewhere. Then we put over here, we take the race fuel out, mm -hmm. put regular pump gas on uh -huh. this thing. And man, she cranks nice, revs nice, and put some power down. I like yeah. it. I like it too. Yeah, it's just good. The engine is all one piece, making power. So. <laughs> one piece. <Yeah. laughs> but uh, basically the tune-up, it was much different from before? Not much different because like there's a lot of stuff that we can do on a hub dyno that's really hard to do on a chassis dyno or even at the track because something that like if you watch drifting because in the end the show was more about drifting than anything mm -hmm. else right you have a lot of like throttle no throttle throttle no throttle like it's so it's really tough to look to a log of drifting and try to fine tune it because mm -hmm. it's a lot of driver engagement right mm -hmm. so you play a lot of fuel enrichment the pump enrichment but like it's hard to actually do the base. If it feels good for the driver, it's it's kind of good. You're nuking into numbers, right? Mm -hmm. Once you put it back here, it's attached. There's no slippage. The time that we dyno first was a chassis dyno, so it was mm -hmm. slipping a little. We don't know exactly. We changed the fuel later. I know that you had fuel pump problems at some point, so there's some stuff changed, right? Now we could. We saw there was a deficiency early. Mm -hmm. So between like 2000 and 3500, so like when the motor kind of tries to go up, was kind of lean. But I bet you as a driver could kick the clutch, mm -hmm. you know, you as a, as a driver kind of fixing the tune-up mm -hmm. by driving well, yes. right? But now, if you take this baby for a spin, I bet it's going to be better to drive, easier to drive. Tune-up for drift car is very different for... Drag racing. Drag racing. Yeah, compared yeah, to drag racing. Very, very oh, yeah. yeah. The transition oh, yeah. or the you throttle a lot, a lot of throttle. A yes. Lot, yeah. A lot. It's crazy, right? So on drag racing, it's pure load, no driver input. If mm -hmm. you're doing this, something is wrong. Mm -hmm. Drifting is the other way around. Mm -hmm. No load, mm -hmm. pretty much no load. Let, 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 let me rephrase. Small load, okay. right? <laughs> Small load and a lot of driver input. So the motor needs to go up, go down, go up, go down, never box, you know, that kind of mm -hmm. stuff. Drag racing is, for that is easy, like you press trans brake, you deck it, the yeah. thing's pulls, ready to go, you don't touch the throttle. <laughs> you <laughs> like... <laughs> but, and for us it's actually a great opportunity to, sh to enter the, the, the drift market because we, we all had these features developed so many years. Yes. And a lot of people in the US specifically don't, don't know FuelTech is actually so, so the, uh, well... Uh, a lot of people in the US doesn't even know we're so successful on drift. Yes. And uh, this has been a good opportunity for us to show our uh, presence on the drift market. So I would say now let's pull this car off. And bring the other one and in. bring the real race car now. Yeah, because that's, that's modern, yeah. right? Like yeah. this is an old school V8 with a blower. Yes. That's the old school deal. The other one? Yeah. Import style, turbocharger, yeah. nitrous assisted, like it's fancy. That one is fancy one. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Okay, let's start. One.
Overreacting. Yeah, you guys see that was way worse. Yeah. 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 Because it was making more power, I think it just went too rich in the stage. So the, the Mustang now we have the FRS here. Yes. Two for one. Two for one. Two for one. So one low price. So low price is the V8 supercharger. That's like low budget. Low budget. Yes, yes. And this is the high dollar <laughs> project. Inline six turbo charge. And now we spray a little bit. <laughs> Man, you, you you got me worried for a second if you didn't use the bottle. I saw that thing like, come on, what? You don't like it, you too? A little bit. A little bit. <laughs> so guys, this is the Formula Drift. This car was built formerly by Ryan Turk, yes. right? And uh, race 2020, 21? 2019. 19, okay. And then uh, a year ago or a couple years ago, you, you acquired this car from a great friend of us, Colton yes. Hunter, right? Yes. Uh, JDM Supreme, if you guys follow some JDM craziness, this guy has been collecting this guy is amazing. the nicest cars uh, in the planet, let's say this way. Uh, so and uh, also Colton and JDM been helping and uh, managing your program as well, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and the coolest thing is this car was already built with uh, the nicest parts in mm -hmm. the world, pretty much. Oh, the engine is every engine is bad. Yeah, everything is yeah, very is well badass. done, very well done. And we're now having an opportunity a few years later to upgrade to do some changes. Uh, last year we did the upgrade and the, did the install of the fuel tank of the 600. We did uh, all the tuning and the preparation for the car. Then you had the opportunity to go testing for the first mm -hmm. time and actually race uh, uh, in, in Long Beach for the first events, yes. Formula Drift. And uh, now you're back here for Atlanta and since uh, Atlanta is our home track here, uh, we, we thought it would be a good opportunity to make some changes and upgrades since you already have the, the, the feeling of the car. And the biggest change we, you actually thought in doing was uh, changing the turbo. Yes. Uh, the, the previous turbo was a G4, uh, Garrett G42-1200, mm -hmm. which is a great turbo. It was making a lot of power, like over a thousand wheel horsepower. But we were feeling like the, 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 the response may, could be improved. So we thought either could increase the amount of nitros, the anti lag could be modified as well, improved, but nothing will do the same as really matching a turbo that will be 
eventually a better fit for this engine. Mm -hmm. So Garrett, at the time this car was built, they did not have the G40 turbo, which is a step below or a step between G42 and G35. On uh, size. On size, yes. Yes. Uh, and then uh, now, like a year ago or two, they uh, released this new turbo. So even Garrett mentioned to us that it will, be, it will probably worth to. <laughs> even even Garrett mentioned to us it would be worth to test this turbo and then uh, this is what we're doing right now. So this how how is the testing? What do you see? So vehicles? should I start talking about the nitrous or the turbo? <laughs> 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 we saw we saw right like uh, so much quicker response. So we actually lost power, mm -hmm. but we, it was expected, right? So the car used to do up to a thousand to the tire. Problem is was upstairs. So when you're already sideways, already making smoke, usually you're actually modulating power. You're backing up the throttle so it's not so hard on the limiter. So we, we got that idea together. We all discussed like what we think it is. We saw Garrett options. And I personally think that we, we nail in the head on this one because the car behaves so much better. The is full up time takes 1500 RPM or less. Mm -hmm. And when it happens, the motor at some parts of the RPM range have double the power. So it's not 10% increase. We talk about over 100% increase a on, on that parts that you, oh, I need to kick the clutch. Mm -hmm. More likely you won't need to. And then we spray a little bit and now we end up triple the power that the big turbo, no nitrous, right? Yes. So small turbo nitrous made three times more at almost 2000 RPM earlier, right? So yes. it behaves like a large motor. Very, right? very different. So I, I, I'm, I'm anxious. I want to see you driving this thing, mm -hmm. so you can feedback how much difference that makes. Mm -hmm. so I'm gonna tell based on drag racing. When you increase 10 percent, you see numbers. We talk about 300 percent. Mm -hmm. This is gonna be like a new car for you, mm -hmm. right? So I like it. I like it. I'm excited. I want to see it. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> <laughs> so now we're actually having. We're gonna, well, let's. I'm gonna show some of the graphs. Maybe let's look at the logs yeah. from the dime, right? Because we, we discuss about power, like. Fuel and timing is that's not what we're trying to achieve right now. Is this here? We have three graphs, right? I'm gonna show power first. Let me take torque away. So, this is the power curve. White is the big turbo. You can see it makes more, but it takes a long time to get there. At the same RPM, you wouldn't spool anything. There is zero boost, zero boost. That's just the motor. The smaller tube already spools a little, so it's already helping the motor. So it starts higher. Purple line is the small turbo, no nitrous. So you can see it's spooling pretty much as soon as we let go. So like 3000 RPM, the turbo is already moving. The big one is nothing, nothing, nothing. And then finally goes really aggressive, narrow RPM bend, really narrow. The small turbo peaks less. As you can see, it's lower, right? But it's way wider. So the car is going to be more useful for you at the track. Yes. You have a broader range where you can mm -hmm. swing RPM and the car comes back. Better. And when we apply the nitrous, look at this thing. It's impressive how much boost it made earlier. Yes. And obviously the nitrous, because it was like a 100 shot, something like that. It's like a 70 shot, let me say, but because it's a turbo car, it actually helps. More with the temperature. And it makes a little bit more than it should, right? Because you see here about 100, uh, almost 100 horsepower, right? Yes. So upstairs, Right, A53, yeah, 759, it's pretty much 100, 92, uh -huh. you know, something like that. But you can see clearly when it kicks in, mm -hmm. how quicker it pulls when it kicks yeah. in, because that's pretty much what it is, right? So we were turning on at 3500, at 3500, oh, and also something we, we played with was the VVT, the variable camshaft control, mm -hmm. and that also made some. some yeah, they help, but I'm gonna tell you, it helped less than I thought it would, because mm -hmm. we went from zero degrees, just like the big turbo. Mm -hmm. Right, you guys can see there's several laps here, it's not just one. And we start adding timing to it, and you could see it helps, mm -hmm. but it was, it was minimal because this motor only have the VVT on the intake. Okay. So we can't change overlap, and usually the overlap helps a lot on this pull up, right? Mm -hmm. And we couldn't change much because we couldn't move both. So the Coyote motor has both, yeah, and usually hard. shows a larger difference. This one for sure, it helps, but it's not like, oh my god, how I fix it. The turbo on my opinion, is the one that actually changed the behavior of the car. And nitrous, as usual, you know, just adds the spice. <laughs> <you know? laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Now, 
now the car is being is going uh, now the car is going to cafe now the car is going to the road atlanta mm -hmm. ready for the event hope you see a good testing you guys are going to see how he goes on this race because you're going to follow up with us how this race goes so no Thanks. pressure, bud. Yeah. No Car is way better. Okay. <laughs> no pressure. Okay. <laughs> Let's <luck>. go. <laughs> Thank, Thank you so you, much. Man. Appreciate it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, guys. Mm-hmm.